of the most remote and least developed places in the world, Magda Wetapel, is growing vegetables. Her village in the highlands of Papua, Indonesia's easternmost province, is reachable only by air and is seldom visited by outsiders. It's a place where development projects have had little success. Tribal customs are strong here, and for women like Magda, this means they have no say over their lives, their families and their futures. Men decide how women should think, live and act. It was our traditional practice that the men were the ones making the decisions. We didn't question it because it was our tradition. If we tried to violate these traditional practices, something bad would happen to us, like we would get sick. So we accepted it. But then a small pilot project, initiated by the UN agency IFAD and the government of Indonesia, helped the women of this village gain a small amount of financial independence, which radically changed their lives. The project idea is simple. Facilitators work with community leaders to define their own problems and come up with their own solutions. With training and preparing proposals and budgets, they can access grant money to make their ideas a reality. We used to live in a traditional way. Women were mostly under the control of men. But with this project, women got a chance to farm in a group. And we are thankful for this. They may be thankful now, but this was not what the male leaders of the village first had in mind. They did not want to change the role of women, but they did want to make more money. And as agriculture is their main source of income, and it is the women who are the farmers of the village, the men finally agreed, after three months of discussions, that the women could receive training in agriculture and financial management. And now, after two years, the women have their own bank account for the first time. They decide for themselves how to use the money and how to farm. Before the project, men made the decisions about agriculture and when to plant the crops. But now we are working as a women's group and we need to make the plans and decide how the group will work. So now we make our own decisions. Now Magda is making decisions outside of the group too. With the money she earns from selling her vegetables, she has quadrupled her family income. And she's decided to put aside money for her son's university education. Now that women are becoming the primary breadwinners, they are treated with respect and they have far more independence in all aspects of their lives. I feel proud because our lives have changed so much and I'm very happy. The secret of the project's success, says Ron Hartman, who worked with the government to develop it, is that it focuses on local needs rather than importing solutions from outside the region. Papua itself is quite a challenging environment. It's very remote. Um, culturally, it's, it's very different to other parts of Indonesia. Um, and the difference that this project, I think, has made is that it's been tailored specifically for Papua and the populations therein. It uses the social structures that are actually on the ground rather than transposing something from outside on them. Um, but the main point is that it, it really supports the potentials that they have in agriculture, which is so important for their livelihoods. This little pilot project is now in 215 villages in Papua. And it may get much bigger. Based on its success, the Indonesian government is considering replicating it across the country, which would benefit tens of millions of people.